before the Vasa until now. Nine of my monks friends that I know <laughs> pass away. Sometimes when other people die, we thought, ah, never when other people die. But when you when somebody you know, especially they are monk, and monk they are so little monk. <laughs> Can you imagine? Nine of them. I said, hey. wow. And they are not very old monk, no? 50 plus, 60 plus. So it's so uncertain. It's getting nearer and nearer. It made me think, no? Ooh. When is our turn? <laughs> When is our turn? <laughs> when is our turn? And ask them to, and because of COVID, they they couldn't keep the body, so they sent it to the mortuary for autopsy. Even the autopsy people also do an autopsy. Say you don't need to go back, but <laughs> even. Even the hospital also don't do autopsy. Say, what for after all? Die already, burn. Don't have to autopsy because they're also scared of COVID. But this monk, he doesn't die of COVID. He fell down. He said hit on the concrete wall, concrete uh, ground because he wanted to go and bathe. He fell. So, he's very fit. Very fit monk. So, <laughs> so uncertain. Eh? Not like some other monk have been sick. Uh, understandable kidney failure, heart attack. You know, most of the monks that know, the fit one are uh, another one who climbed to the tree to look at elephant, <laughs> <laughs> and he fell down from the tree, died also. So, nine, nine of them really. The more I come, come hey, wow, all my friends leaving me. <laughs> But that is life. This is the truth that is prevailing every day. <clears throat> like I said, sometimes we don't feel the heat when the fire is far away. When the fire is coming nearer and nearer, we can feel the heat. Well, fire is really dangerous. You don't feel the heat when there's no fire. Likewise. And... Uh, This Ajahn Sengok, uh, he got 40 over Vasa. 40, at least, at least 42 or 43, at least. So he has been spending alone, staying alone all his life. Like a Pacheka Buddha, like that. You know, he don't mingle around. He don't involve with people, you know. If we invite him, he may not go also. <laughs> uh, only certain people. But I was honored when we have the JD opening in Singapore, and uh, yeah, he came. He came down. A, a lot of monks that normally even you invite them, they won't go. So I went to see them. Dad, you come uh, to Singapore. To help with the opening. You know, oh, of course, King, I must go. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I was very, very, very blessed because a lot of Kuba Ajahn, they have uh, the compassion on me. Because why? Because they know that we are foreigner, we stay far away, and they want to support you for the good deeds. That's why sometimes we talk about good deeds. If you do things wholeheartedly, sincerely, the sincerity must be there. Your heart must put into what you are doing sincerely with, without ulterior motive. Then you'll be blessed. You don't worry. Because people what people got eyes, people can see whether we do our what we do our sincerity, truthfulness. People can know all oh, this person, this person is very sincere, very truthful. Then people will support. Even though they may not like the way you do things, but they will support because of what? Sincerity and truthfulness. See, on the other hand, if a person not sincere, right, he can be very pleasing. He talk very nice words, you know, every time very pleasing, but it's not sincere, not truthful. 
The Buddha said we better stay away these two people because they have ulterior motive. Right? So if you want to mix with people, we mix with good people who are sincere. Huh? People with sincerity, we mix. People we know, truthfulness, not sincere, we better, you know. We can, because it's a society, we have to, we have to uh, associate, right, with this our people. But we have the choice. Associate at what level, you know. Uh, so, yeah. So sometimes we practice the Dharma, it's not that we are heartless or, or we are, we are, we don't do help. It's just that, do they deserve to be helped? We help our what? We help our compassions. Then we help. Okay? Not not because of some interest, no. We help or because on un- a compassionate ground. Yeah, a lot of things like this morning I was talking to my mom. Right? About the the, the restriction thing. We we must have the proper measure and we we, we, we work within the guideline. And we still can get things moving. Of course, we're not, to, not going to go against the law. Then you won't have any problem. No repercussion. No people will criticize you because we already take the precautions measure. Uh, then things can move. No problem. No problem. Uh, that's why we have all these uh, 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 precautions coming up, measure to prevent, preventive measure. Right? We just follow. We just follow, but we cannot prevent things from happening like people don't fall sick. You know, we, we must believe in karma, even though with this, uh, without this COVID-19 uh, now spreading the fire, before COVID-19, people also die, also have flu, die of cancer, heart attack, high blood pressure, stroke, right? So this is the truth of the universal truth. Like human being, if you are born, you are subject to what? Birth, aging, illness, and death. Uh, uh, but this preventive measure is just to prevent, to slow down the spread of the disease. But you can never, can never spread or get rid of the disease. If you want to get a disease, don't born into this world. <laughs> don't born as a, don't be born at all. Then you don't have to face with aging. You know, and that. But if you are born, you must tell yourself, I must prepare for all this shortcoming. That is the universal truth. You see, the truth is not the, the major truth, is you are born. But if you are born, these are the things they're going to follow. You see, so don't blame. A lot of people like to blame the government, blame, blame the system, blame the weather, blame the. You don't blame. Blame why are you born? <laughs> because you are born. It's not because of the, the government no good, the system. System is there, human being. Every human being who don't want peace and happiness, who don't want to have a healthy body, but because of your karma, you see, you are born. Even you see people who are very strong. So what? But if your lifespan has been used up, like what the Buddha say, lifespan, your good karma, Use up. You see, people, I have my army friend, right? Very fit. Every day he runs 10 kilometers, swimming, everything. So fit in the army. And I read in the news down here, I read, ah, he died already. The wife said he go every morning, 5 o'clock, he go running already. And then so late, how can never come back? Seven something normally come back for breakfast, haven't come back. Then the policeman come and knock at the door. Oh, the husband died at the park while running. Heart attack. You see? So, and of course, people with no religious background, they will say that, oh, so unfair, so fit, what happened to him? And he had autopsy to find what is the cause, all oh, the cause is this. Is dead ready. You find the cause. Even if you know the cause, you cannot revive him. So the real thing is, if you are born. If you are born, you will be facing what birth, aging, illness, and death. <laughs> That's why this is the world of samsara, right? Even if you have very rich, you can be very healthy, 
a lot of money, a lot of good houses, good relations, blah, 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 blah. So what? Still, the nature. So if we can accept this nature, this happening, so no problem, right? Like what is happening now? The whole world, people can go crazy. But if you want to look at the most fundamental things, why are you born at <laughs> the first place? If you are born, you got to face with all the kind of fairness or unfairness of the world. This is normal because we human beings have greed, have hatred, have delusion, human beings. And those people who empower in the politics, you think so what? They are arahan, no greed, no, no hatred and delusion, no vested interest in it. No! Of course, they say, ah, oh, we serve the people. Serve who? You serve yourself first. Because everybody also knows. Let your family people uh, live a good life, you know, comfortable life, but not at the expense of other people. Uh, this one is good leader. Leader with what? Morality. Just like ourselves. If you look at ourselves, start from ourselves, our training, from ourselves first. Do you want? Not? If you want, are you happy now? You're not happy. Why? You got to start from here, from your own heart. Then you can, from here, you understand it all. Same. Then when you look at other people, probably tell them, oh, it's very pitiful, like I said yesterday. Because of human mind, this kind of mind state, human mind state is very, very fragile. Right? It's very easily shaken by the sensory gland. Because of the sensory gland, and then because of this three poison in us, great hatred delusion, it always wobble through contact. And you can't help it because you're a human being. Right? You cannot say that, ah, oh, I see, but I don't want, I, I want. Unless you practice, unless you practice the Dharma, you study the Dharma, practice the Dharma, put into action and practice, and you, you really benefited from the practice that, oh yeah, with proper Guidance of the mind, have mindfulness to guard the mind, have put toll to guard the mind, right? Not letting this unwholesome thought come and take over our mind all this whole time, day in, day out, 24 hours, think like crazy people. Then you, you don't have sati. We must be able to maintain mindfulness. It's very important, this samadhi, also concentration exercise. It's very important because it creates the base for your mind. If you if if you have pity, the foundation of samadhi, then your mind don't would like to would want to go outside to mess with external things. Because why? Right, the more you mess, the more you got to think, and you create a lot of what we call that undercurrent. Even though we may may let the matter rest, but when we meditate, it becomes a hindrance in our mind. We call it need one become dust, become a kind of a disturbance into our mind. That's why we try to cut down external involvement. And that is the case. Not that we don't involve, we involve at a certain level. If not, our mind always, you know, very hit, hit up. And you don't have the base. And you don't, we don't, cannot find the happiness inside. And this is what happened with, with a lot of people, the whole world, right? That's why the Buddha's teaching say that you see, Nati Santi Paramang Sukhang. Nati Santi Paramang Sukhang. Bliss, peacefulness is the highest blessing. Bliss, peacefulness from great hatred delusion. Not normal bliss. A normal bliss in, in normal people level is that you're blissful, you're happy, peaceful because like financially, no problem. Financially, you got money, you got a house. You got the you know partner, family, everything is no problem. So you feel, oh, I'm so blessed, so peaceful, right? This is on based on material level. But what happens if something happened? Ah, oh, cannot find peace anymore because why? Right? You start to worry, worry about what? Worry about oh, I got no more money, my house got problem, my job got problem, my family relationship got problem. And all these things will pop up and then you cannot find peace anymore. See? Ah, this one you the this type of thing you need external thing to give you peace. But what the Buddha talking about is the peace of the mind. It means regardless whether you are poor or you're rich, 
you maintain mindfulness, you are able to cultivate your mind through the proper training of sila, samadhi, panya, observant of precept, right? The observant of precept with less thought, less commitment, less, less wrongdoing, then your mind easily can calm down because you don't kill, don't steal, no sexual misconduct, don't tell lies, don't, don't talk so much, don't drink alcohol, or don't have involvement with external things that cause our mind to be restlessness, then our mind easily to, can calm down. Right? You see people who broke the precept, for example, they tell lies, then they, they got to keep creating more lies to cover their life because they scared people will know the truth. Right? Or, or people who still think, they scared that people will know. Hey, he used a handphone, a handphone belongs to someone. He always has this fear because he ever steal this phone. And people look at him two, three times. They say, hey, does he know or not? Or does, why look at me this way? Why? <laughs> you see, you have this kind of doubt, you know, that is harboring your mind, haunting you, haunting you. Or someone come, you know, this way is the, is the husband of another lady that you get involved. Actually, you, you go to the supermarket to buy things. You see, money, you have fear. Hey, how come this man come? How come this and how come that? You see how this kind of wrongdoing can create that kind of thoughts to come and haunt ourselves because of our own doing. Yeah? Killing, stealing, sexual misconduct, telling lies, alcohol, same thing. The worst alcohol, once you drink, ready, finish. You get drunk, and then you, you, when you get drunk, you're very bold, very daring. Wow, you don't know, then you fight. After that, you sober, eh? then you start to regret, Aya, I shouldn't do it. Aya, Aya, you know from start, Aya. Then you still do it. Yeah? So, it's very hard. See, that's why you must have the preset. Then when you come to meditation, Easy. A lot of people say, how come my mind cannot calm down? Huh? I chant this and I chant that. And then they say, oh, this I chant no good. Ask me to put toe only. I want another method. Don't need put toe can or not. I say, go ahead, law. Uh, then they go shopping for their I chant, this I chant. Uh, in the end, you know what kind of dharma they learn? And then they say, wow, oh, they know this and they know that. But you look at their behavior. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Is this type of behavior? People who know dharma, <laughs> no precept. <laughs> Uh, remember, whatever thing we do, we can change external thing. The Buddha's teaching, but never change sila, samadhi, panya. Sila, the five precept, the eight precept, ten precept, two to seven precept for monk. If anyone say don't need, got problem ready. Samadhi is a must. The samadhi will only make the mind calm down, get the energy, got the power of the samadhi the power of the base of the mind, then you can see things more clearly. It's just a vehicle that's traveling along the, 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 the super highway. Can you see clearly nothing? You can't. You've got to stop. Just like our mind. Our mind must stop. When you stop, then you see, oh, very clearly. Okay. Just like a wheel, a pool of water. When the pool of water have current, have a lot of wave. It get milky. You don't see clearly, but the water that is very calm. Wow, you can see. Wow, broken grasses, stone, plastic bag, all these dirty things human being throw into the sea or into the pond, you see. This resembles our mind. This grip, this hatred, delusion, this craving inside there. They can know, oh, okay, I work with the thing that I can handle now. Don't go and handle those mind state that we cannot handle. Remember, handle those things that you can handle first. What thing comes first? You handle that 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 the issue in our mind. Anger arises. Handle it. Anger, jealousy. We handle jealousy. Hatred. We we handle hatred. And this is what we call up hand, up to date, hands on, hands on practicing. Yeah. No anger come, you let go of the anger, and then you go back. You see, after then I, th I think about how come I get angry. Finish! It become a sanya, a memory, really. then you cannot meditate. All oh, these things keep troubling ourselves. You know, go over our mind all the time. And you find, oh, this is what we call hindrances. Need one. 
So, yeah. Yeah, this is the practice. Remember, right? It's for some reflection. Right? There will be the sharing. The mouth give blessing now.